let's see how this all plays out with a worked example. We'll consider something a local reference frame where we initially have these two non-zero tensor elements, xxz and yyz, and we're asking what happens if we want to rotate our reference frame about some angle phi, and the rotation matrix for that um, is going to equal the following. Cosine phi, negative sine phi, zero, sine phi, cos phi, zero, 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 one. And we can get that just by setting theta equal to zero and phi, or psi equal to zero in the full generalized rotation matrix that we had, or here. <laughs> okay. So if we do this rotation operation, um, let's ask first how that affects chi xxe. And I'm going to change my pen colors here so I can keep track of a few things. And I want to know what is chi x x z in the rotated reference frame phi and how does that relate it's going to have, it's going to have two contributions it'll have the initial contribution from x x z and then because of you because you're rotating the reference frame there'll also be an additional contribution from the value of whatever chi y y z was so let's consider first the contribution from chi x x z in the initial reference frame I knew that I had it. And that's going to be, we're, we're going to map, we're going to pull out the elements of this rotation matrix. Now we know we can evaluate the full 27 by 27, but we're just going to look at it one element at a time. It'll be a little bit easier in terms of bookkeeping. We're going to ask, what is the, the element of that 27 by 27 Kronecker product of three rotation matrices that connects this particular initial tensor to this particular final tensor? And we'll get that by considering first the rotation matrix that connects these two, so that'll be R, X, X. And then the next one will be the, the rotation matrix that connects these two, which will be R, X, X again in this case. And then finally, the rotation matrix that connects these two. All right, and then we're also going to have an additional contribution from chi y. y z. <laughs> oh, let's go back to keep any. All right, and that by analogy, I'll, I'll skip the color coding on this one just for simplicity. This will be R X Y R X Y and R Z Z. So if we evaluate what all of these are, given our rotation matrix here, we're going to end up with chi X X Z zero times this is the X X position, so I'll have a cosine, cosine, and one cosine squared phi plus chi y y z in our initial reference frame times x y is this one so I'll have a negative sine phi but squared so that'll be sine phi we can repeat the same thing for chi y y z in the rotated reference frame and that's going to give us a contribution from ah, X, X, Z initial, and now this time we'll have the sine squared here, plus chi, Y, Y, Z, and then this will be cosine phi. All right, uh, but it turns out that we're not entirely done because there's also two additional tensor elements that can emerge from azimuthal rotation in this sense. And those are the ones that look like um, chi x, y, z. So if we include those as well, we get something that looks like this. Let's first consider chi x, y, z in the rotated reference frame, which wasn't initially present, but can be present in this rotated reference frame. We'll have chi, oh, I'm out of ink. Uh. 
Okay, let's see if this works now. So I've got chi x x z zero times. What do I have? I have, a, I have an x x, so that'll give me a cosine phi, and then I have a y z, or I'm sorry, a y x, and that will give me a sine phi. So the total is going to be sine phi cosine phi plus chi y y zero. And now I'm going to have a x, y, 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 z, z. So x, y, 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 that will give me a negative sine. I'm going to change this to a minus sine phi, cosine phi. And then finally, we'll have the, an analogous operation for y, x, z. And it turns out that this one will yield exactly the same thing as we had before, or exactly the same thing as x, y, z, because we're projecting the same tensor elements just in a different order. Okay, so a couple of interesting things. Um, we have we, we, a couple of things to note. The new tensor elements have contributions from many existing initial tensor elements and Tensor elements that did not exist can emerge in this rotated reference frame. And that's a good place to stop for now. Oh, actually, I take it back. That's a, good, that's a terrible place to stop for now. I want to point out a couple of additional things before I let you go here. Um, the first is that tensor rotation is not limited to, um, to second order nonlinear optics and processes of rank three. These can easily and directly be generalized to any, arbitrarily, any arbitrary order of nonlinear optical interaction, including um, four-wave mixing in cars and third harmonic generation and extensions to five, six-wave mixing. However many waves you want to mix, you can describe this, uh, this tensor rotation in, in an exactly analogous vectorized format. So it's, it's quite handy uh, when you're talking about, uh, about uh, high-order effects. All right, that's a good place to stop.